Hey everyone, it's Robert from On My Turntable. Hope you're having a great day today. It's Saturday afternoon. Um, just came in, that's why my glasses are a little dark. Uh, transition glasses. I don't notice them until I do something <laughs> like this. Um, today I want to talk about a cool box set that I received a few days ago and I just haven't had a chance to get at it. Um, Jethro Tull the original album series five great albums before I get into it please hit the like and subscribe button below thank you to all that have liked and subscribed so far I greatly appreciate it I want to continue to put great content out there to be informative and to show you guys some great bands and artists that I have in my collection uh, thank you again for all your great comments your likes your subscriptions uh, pushing towards a hundred subs um, ten more to go and I'll get there so um, yeah so uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to get this in the mail it took a long time like well over a month month and a half to get this I'm still waiting for another one um, that uh, I kind of gave up on on both of these and uh, um, but uh, this one popped in the mail last week hopefully the other one will arrive soon um, and it not, not necessarily to complete my Jethro Tull collection, but it definitely adds to it. So uh, I currently have on vinyl one of my favorites, War Child. Thick as a brick. A. which is included in this box set songs from the wood which is included in the box set as well and Stormwatch which is included in the box set and finally my all-time favorite and I think a lot of people's all-time favorite um, Aqualung yeah 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 uh, but this one here, as I said, five CDs. Um, cool little package. So these have all been digitally remastered. They sound great. Uh, they look great. Uh, colored CDs and all. So it starts off with songs from the wood. So Songs from the Wood, 10th studio album um, by uh, the great British rock band, progressive rock band, Jethro Tull, released in 1977. Um, it's a wonderful album uh, for those that enjoy more folk-oriented uh, material, Jethro Tull. Uh, it's a great mixture of acoustic folk and hard rock. Um, unlike War Child and Aqualon, which had a lot of fillers in it, which I didn't mind. A lot of people didn't like that, but I didn't mind it. That kind of added it to the added to the album. Sorry, uh, this one's not filled with any fillers. It's just straight ahead. Uh, great, great songs. Uh, everything gels nicely between Anderson's vocals and his playing and the band's talent and their playing. Um, it's a great little set. So has. Starts off with the title track, Songs from the Wood. Then we have Jack and the Green. A uh, Cup of Wonder. Little harder track. This is from the 2003 remaster as well. Uh, we have Hunting Girl. And we have.
I bring out Celestius Bells. Velvet Green. Uh, Brook, cap in hand. A little heavier track. And fire at midnight. Great, great album. I wish I could play the whole thing for you, but can't. Uh, next, another great album. Some say one of their best. Heavy Horses. Uh, Heavy Horses, the 11th studio album, released in 1978. Um, Songs from the Wood, Heavy Horses, and uh, Stormwatch are part of a trilogy. So this is a second album in the trilogy. Um, another acoustic filled um, uh, celebrating, uh, another acoustic filled album celebrating English folk uh, music. Uh, some say it's better than um, Songs from the Wood. Um, but it's almost a continuation of Songs on the Wood as well, um, but it's a little more passion involved. Great tracks um, on it, uh, title track Heavy Horses, um, No Lullaby, kind of an album that takes you away, um, very brilliantly done by Ian Anderson and, and the folks at Jethro Tull for sure. So it starts off with uh, And the Mouse Police Never Sleep. Now we have Acres Wild. Uh, no lullaby. Moss. Journeyman. The great Martin Barr. Fantastic guitarist. Uh, Rover. And we have one brown mouse. The title track, Heavy Horses. And then ending with uh, Weathercock. Again, uh, 2003 remaster on this one as well. Um, next, we have Stormwatch. Uh, 
Um, Stormwatch is the 12th studio album, released in 1979. Uh, as I said earlier, it's considered the last of the trilogy uh, of Songs of the Wood and Heavy Horses. Um, the album itself touches heavily on the problems of the environment, uh, oil and money. It's the last album to feature uh, Barrymore Barlow, uh, the drummer, uh, and keyboardists John Evans and uh, Dee Palmer. It's also the last to uh, uh, feature bassist John um, Col Col Colstock, sorry, um, unfortunately died uh, during the Stormwatch tour of complications of an op uh, operation. Uh, it's an album that grows on you. It may not be as good as the previous two. Um, it's kind of the weakest of the trilogy, but the more you listen to it, the more uh, uh, it grows on you. So, um, not a bad album at all. So it starts off with North Sea, North Sea Oil. This is also a Stephen Wilson remix as well. Stephen Wilson remixed uh, Aqualung also. Orion? Orion, or sorry, Orion. So you see how right off the bat it's gone away from its folky uh, um, sisters of Songs in the Wood and uh, uh, heavy, uh, heavy Horses. It's more um, more rockin' album. Um, not too much folk on this one. Uh, next is Home. Dark Ages. Great art, great work from Martin Barr. Uh, Warm Sporin. Something's on the move. such an underrated guitarist. Uh, I think he's just amazing. Um, he really is. Uh, next we have A. Kind of a, a corny album cover. I love how they've they've redone the uh, the CD facings but uh, yeah it's kind of a weird title for an album and uh, the space suits and everything or the white painter suits I guess what they are um, so A is the 13th studio album released in uh, 1980 uh, started off as an Ian, um, Ian Anderson solo project but ended up as a Jethro Tull um, project most likely for um, commercial reasons. Uh, definitely has an 80s sound to it uh, with electric sounds different than the previous three albums. Um, again the folkier uh, heavy horses and um, songs from the wood. 
Um, this one's got a more 80 sound. Um, there are some great tracks on it. Crossfire, Working John, Working Joe, uh, Batters Not Included, and the um, uh, Pine Martin uh, Jig. So it starts off with Crossfire. <coughs> Flying Dale Flyer. Working John, Working Joe. Black Sunday. Protect and survive. Next, we have batters are not included. Uniform. Uh, four WD low ratio. Iron Martin's jig. And finally, and further on. So A was a uh, 2004 remix. And finally, um, Broadsword and the Beast. Cool album cover on there. So Broadsword and the Beast is the 14th studio album by the band, released in 1982. Um, cross between the synth uh, synthesized sound of the 80s and the folk style of the previous albums. Um, Broadsword and Pussy Will are two great songs off the album. And they come closest to the folk-like tracks of the, uh, of the past albums as well. Uh, Falling on Hard Tracks, Slow Marching Band, um, Seal Driver, uh, included um, are some great tracks and also uh, some great tracks played by Martin Barr as well. Um, again, highly underrated guitarist um, in Martin Barr. So it starts off with uh, Beastie. We Can we have clasp? Fallen on hard times. Fallen on hard times. Presidents, you've been the green possessed the rolls by a sun. Flying colors. The keys to break the heart. Slow marching band. 
Broadsword. Uh, Pussy Willow. Watching me, watching you. Seal driver. And uh, finally, Cheerio. So there you have it. I know they're, they're chopped up, but uh, I wish I could play the whole um, five albums for you, but can't. Uh, so again, Songs from the Wood, Heavy Horses, Stormwatch, A, and um, Broadsword and the Beast. Five great albums from this uh, cool box set um, that I'm still listening to. Uh, again, with these albums, the more you listen to them, the better they get, I find. Uh, I'm so used to Aqualung, um, so used to the other albums. Uh, this is um, a much different adventure into Jethro Tull, but. Uh, uh, very enjoyable at the same time. Anyway, hope you have a great evening. Thank you so much. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful night and take care. Bye-bye.